Hi, I'm Ashley Watson. I'm an ex-gymnast and I lived and worked in Canada for Cirque du Soleil. You walk into a, into a room and just juggle and just throw like 100 things in the air at once. And you, you turn around with a hand balancer like bent in half. Yeah, but obviously you work on Friday, so then you see your coach and your boss is in there on Thursday. So you like have one beer and stay calm and then as soon as they leave you just send it. <laughs> <laughs> didn't enjoy performing or like competing gymnastics. another episode of Just Chat With Jay. It's been a hot minute. As always, Joanna thought of a really cool new idea. Started it. Life got busy. And then she's not done it for six weeks. Six weeks? Today we're going to be chatting about Cirque du Soleil. So firstly, do you want to introduce yourself, who you are? I'll start asking questions. <laughs> do you want a fun fact as well? Yeah. Uh, uh... Hi, I'm Ashley Watson. I'm an ex-gymnast and I lived and worked in Canada for Cirque du Soleil. Perfect. Fun fact, every bit of hair on my body connects from my head through neck to there, my chest into my armpit, in my arm, groin area, legs, and then it just cuts off on the ankles <laughs> as if I'm wearing like see-through socks. Swiftly moving on. <laughs> this didn't start the way you thought it was going to do it. No. <laughs> Cirque du Soleil. Yes. It's obviously a very prestigious, long-standing business and company. You've got shows all over the world. But quite yeah. often it's an exit strategy yeah. or a post-retirement strategy for gymnasts. Yes. So, when did you decide, how did you decide, what happened and what was your route into Cirque du Soleil? Um, for me, obviously, high level gymnastics, you're in the gymnastics world your whole childhood. It's hard, not a lot of people go to university and do further education, so there's like a, a couple routes people go down. It's either the coach or they go to Cirque du Soleil, or they have to do a full on life change and go do something that they've never done before. And I never really thought about going to Cirque du Soleil, never crossed my mind. I didn't really like the idea of moving away from family and friends and leads and, and all that kind of stuff. I actually was looking into pursuing a stuntman career. There was a Cirque du Soleil scout at the British Championships. I'd, you were still competing at the No, time. I'd freshly retired. Right. I think I was I was coming to watch the British Championships because I wasn't competing that year. I, I'd, I'd retired just to see all the boys and, and watch and stuff. And obviously that's a perfect place for a Cirque du Soleil scout to be at. Um, and then we just got chatting um, and he just explained it all and just said, you know, just send us some videos and, and stuff of you doing some gymnastics. It's going to be, the show's going to be a parallel bar show, which which is obviously my specialty when I was doing gymnastics. It, it, it spots me about a couple of different shows. I can't remember what the show's called, but they do a high bar act. It's like four high bars in a circle and the fling between them and stuff, which is really cool. But then the idea of that for me is, I spoke about this before, I, don't in, I didn't enjoy performing or like competing in gymnastics. So the idea of me doing a high bar act slash show where I'd be doing releasing catches and stuff in the show just filled me with a little bit of anxiety. And it's almost like I'm getting out of the gymnastics world of competing that I didn't really enjoy. So then go in to a, a longer career to sort of do somewhat the similar thing. Yeah. So when the scout was speaking to me about doing a parallel bar show, I thought, oh, that's a, I'm a lot more comfortable in the P-bars and that seems a little bit more down my alley. But so for me, getting into Cirque du Soleil was a bit different to like uh, somebody that's not actively being scouted, if that makes sense. Yeah, or somebody that, so like some gymnast might actually go to Cirque du Soleil and spend a part. You can go on Cirque du Soleil's website, I believe, and just make an account and then you upload videos of, don't have to be gymnastics as well specific, it could be like, uh, tumbling, juggling, like all the areas, showing your talents and you just put videos of what you can do on there and then there's always people on the website looking at accounts, looking for people with specific skill sets that they might need to fill into shows or like what I was doing to start a creation of a new show. Like obviously it was never something that you considered, you chatted to this guy, you were then considering it. Yeah. How long was then between that conversation at the British Championships to you like getting on a plane to go to Canada? Like, uh, what was the timeline? Great question. So I was chatting to him at the British Championships. That's like March, right? I feel like it would have been the following year. Okay, so it was like okay, eighteen so months. I think it was like 18 months, but so obviously I'd spoke to him and, and that sort of stuff and then I had to take videos and send it over to them and then I had to go through a whole, I started to go through like an audition procedure where obviously like, yeah, I might have the gymnastics ability for the for the show, but also mm -hmm. they need somebody who can perform and somebody who can learn dance and 
which you can. And to count <laughs> and, you know, and like, and really act and perform on stage to people. Like, not, not a lot of people have that. The skills can be developed and there were in, in training when I was out there. Um, but I had to do a, the world. There's a, there's a video online on my channel of, of me and Jay, well, the whole squad reacting to my actual Cirque du Soleil audition. So I had to do this, like, improv dance to an instrumental song and really get in touch with my emotions and it was hard. In the meantime, did you keep training? Did you keep? Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's a, lot, a lot in the air and it wasn't a definite that I was going to get in. So it's one of those where you want to train and keep training and keep fit because you're going to go to Cirque, but then it's also like you don't really know if you, you're going to go, so like I can't be bothered to, to keep training. So it's a little bit on and off, on and off, but then as soon as I got the course in, they've got a show for me, and I'm going to be gonna, like, going out in three months' time. As well, let's get back on the P-bars. And then your show was a bit different, right, because it was a creation rather than a show that you had just got a part in and you were, like, slotting into. Mm -hmm. So when you arrived, like, what? Were you literally starting from zero? Did everyone arrive on day one and it was like... Mm -hmm. This is this is the show. This is what we're doing. Look, yeah, let's well, all start to do it together. Basically, it was a traditionally Cirque du Soleil keep it all in house, so mm -hmm. they use their own producers that have produced and created other shows in Cirque. To, so they've got like a core template of what a Cirque du Soleil show looks like and how it works and what people mm -hmm. expect to see when they go to a Cirque show. Mm -hmm. The my one that was called Under the Same Sky, they brought an outsider, so they brought in Evelyn, there's Evelyn. It's Evelyn, she's like, I can't remember what she was, she's like a really artistic and she's done big concerted vibe stuff before. Okay. So the Cirque really liked what she's done and they wanted to bring her in to work with them as like a collaboration to make an like a new hybrid show. We all got there, there was some ex-French national team gymnasts there and that I recognised a couple of faces and so it was cool. Got there and it was from scratch, there were, there were nothing there before, they, they had this sort of concept and idea of the evolution of life, so it was like animals and then the animals evolve up and they start walking and then we come into people and then we're consumers and we consume loads and loads and loads. It's basically we're destroying the world by just taking and taking and taking until it crumbles and then the next starts to grow from the rubbles it almost like a, a, a cycle of evolution of like we sort of would take 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 kill the world so it's nothing and then something else starts to grow and then we we evolve again cool yeah i didn't know that and what did a typical <laughs> week look like at Cirque? i don't know people view like Cirque going going away set living abroad mm. it's basically like living the dream right i guess there's there's two ways you can live in, in Cirque, there's like a touring show and there's like a station show. So ours was at the headquarters, we would make a creation, so we were living like at the HQs. It's, it's a bit more exciting when you're in an actual show that's performing and travelling because you go to a different city every couple of weeks or a couple of months and live a lifestyle there. However, for me, it was in Montreal, Canada. It was in the HQ, it was freezing cold. It reminded me a little bit of, almost like a little bit like uni, but then rather than having different um, classes it was like different so we had like um, like a, a dance session in the morning and then we'd go do p-bar training where we were trying to like because obviously this p-bar act has never been seen before so we were literally the first people just trying to make something out of nothing so we were just trying everything we could just to make something and sort of develop it and, and grow it so it was really cool for me because it's not like I was stepping into a role and then somebody says okay just do x y and z and then put me in a show and then I'll go perform it was like right guys there's 20 of us in this room let's let's create a, a circ act it's like all right <laughs> all right just, really just, cool. just 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 go play and we just jump on the p-bars and just just try anything there were nothing off limits out of the box that's so different to gymnastics as well right? yeah absolutely yeah the p-bars in the show were like four p-bars next to each other like this i would say traditional gymnastics p-bars just two parallel bars there's four in the three meters in the air and there's also a set imagine a really long set of p-bars around all four sides so then we were jumping from the sides on to the bars and from the I middle really bars. I really want to see some footage. Oh, I've got footage, but I, I don't know if I sound if I signed a waiver form. I can I can show it. Like an NDA. Yeah, because the. Well, can you show me it? I can. I can show you. <laughs> I can show you, yeah. But they're actually, I think they've, they've they've restarted the creation of my show. Obviously, it got it got put on hold because of COVID nineteen, and then decided that they didn't want to continue with like I think it's with the P bar act and stuff. So like fifty percent of the, the the cast got caught, including myself. I think you would have gone back if they'd have called you up and were like, "We want you to go back." Like when? Like I feel like the answer would be yes, transitioning to no. So like, where do you think the no? Yeah, would've well, gone? like straight after like COVID COVID and stuff, like I I would have. I would have gone out, I guess. I'm not sure, because like, 
Once I started creating content in YouTube, the squad and living with the boys and all that kind of stuff, that's when, that I feel like that's when I would have maybe started to say no, because I'd, obviously I'm really happy and love my life here, like now, so like, I don't I don't think I'd go back now. Yeah. However, I do see some stories of some of the guys that are there on, on Echo Creation, I'm like, oh damn, I wish, I wish I, I, wish I would have at least performed. Yeah. So we put, so we put six months of work into creating a show, and then it's just gone like that. If someone went up tomorrow and said, actually, I've decided we're going to put more P bars back into <laughs> the show, <laughs> and we want you to come back. Yeah. I don't think so. I feel like... It'd be tough, wouldn't it? It would, it would, it would be tough, and I don't, I, I don't know, I guess... In, well, I, I don't know. <laughs> All right, I'll go back. <laughs> Call me! <laughs> I was going to say, like, I do enjoy performing, but it's like it's a different type of performing. Interesting. Yeah, I do miss it. What's the headquarters like in Canada? Montreal, is it? Montreal, yeah. What's it like? Is it like a university? Is it like a university? Yeah, yeah. It's really cool because the actual headquarters building where the magic happens, um, over the, literally over the road, is where all the digs are. So where all, all of us... You can just... Take your last ten to nine, and then get Basically, out. Basically, yeah, and like stomp through all the four foot high snow <laughs> over the road to like, the studios. Um, but these, as you can probably imagine, these the studios where you go in are massive warehouses. The, the roofs are mad tall. A bit like ITV for Niall. Yeah, but like ITV, like but loads bigger. You know, the people climb up the, for the camera, and yeah, there's, yeah. there's like just ropes and wires hanging everywhere. There's like you walk into a, into a room, there's a juggler just throwing like hundred things in the air at once. And you, you turn around, there's a hand balancer like bent in half. Really? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. So why do people go there? Obviously, you guys were there for a creation, but why? Yeah. What are the other people like? What's that juggler doing? They also there. They have people go there when they're on like rehab. So. If they've been injured and they're making a comeback, there's the medical team there and the physios and stuff. So people tend to go. So if, say, if you're in circuit and you got injured, you normally go home to recover and then make the transition back into your show. You go to the HQ okay. and you train there for however amount of time. But there you work with a coach and then you build up to getting back into doing your required routines and skills. Okay. And, and you'd relearn like the, the dance numbers and, mm -hmm. and your cues and stuff. And then when you're ready, they'll tick you off and then you'll fly out to you wherever your show is. That's cool. Yeah. And then if there's like, presumably the touring shows have breaks, so like during the breaks, would that show come back to HQ? No. Or would they go home? Or no, what? so what happens is that the crew pack up, drive to the new place, set it up. And in that time, the athletes, you, you have time to do whatever you want, so not the people normally go home. I think it's maybe two weeks maximum. Yeah. At the time, so people go home, have a break. And is there never really an extended break with shows? Like once you get going and once you're on tour, is that it? You're just on tour? Um, I, I think so. I, like I said, like, I, I can't really answer that because I was never on a touring yeah. show. Um, but from my from my understanding that, that, yeah, it's pretty much all year round. And remember, it's around the world, so like off season here is on season somewhere else in the yeah. world. So I've heard through the grapevine Right. But it's pretty wild life when you go to Cirque and you're in a show or you live at Cirque. Mm. Like, I don't know, it's, I feel like it's quite notorious to, for people to be doing crazy things and drinking a lot and mm. partying and... Yeah, I mean, is it, that correct? It definitely was. <laughs> it definitely was that when I was there. <laughs> um, like for us, obviously living at the HQ and it's over the road from work, and everyone's everyone's always there. So it's like there's a communal thing downstairs with a pool table and ping pong table, and there's a sh bar. corner shop. There's no bar there. Is there but not? No, there's a, there's a corner shop around the road. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, of course, everyone works all day. You don't want to sit by yourself in your room, so you just meet down in the communal area, and then it just snowballs, I guess, from there. There's a bar in the actual HQ building that was only open on a, I think it was a Thursday evening. So are they big So they they were, yeah, but obviously you work on Friday, so then you, you see your coaches and your bosses in there on Thursday. So you like have one beer and stay calm and then as soon as they leave you just send it <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like half nine i've got a harness on i've been dragged up a wall pretending to be a bull <laughs> 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 i can't open my eyes so i feel sick <laughs> oh was it bad <laughs> yeah pr yeah you should send it most nights or here and there yeah i feel like the sort of the group that i was involved with got a bit of a bad rep of being the drinkers 
you're living out in Montreal and it's like in another world and you've met new friends, it's like, I, w I want to experience things and I want to have a f great time. Yeah. But then obviously then like, you, where, do, where do you cap that or where do you stop it? Because yeah. obviously it just... What advice would you give somebody who wants to go to Cirque, move away from home or try something different? I hate these questions. Why? I don't know, because I'm so bad at them. No, you're not. <laughs> um, I'd say it's definitely worth it and it's worth putting yourself out there. Obviously, for me, it was the last thing on my mind was to move away from home. Like I was At the time, I was leaving forever, as my mum would say. But it's definitely worth it. Put yourself out of your comfort zone. It's also, also as well, if you're similar to my situation where you've been training gymnastics for 15, 20 years, you've grown those skills and you've developed them, like, like used them in a, in a great, positive, fun way. Gymnastics for me was mostly serious and strict and I didn't couldn't really take advantage of my skill set because it was just so disciplined. Whereas going out to Cirque or something similar, it allows you to relearn your love for the sport and enjoying using your skill set that you have and you've developed over all those years. Be proud, be proud of them. Don't just go be an accountant. <laughs> <laughs> How do you use them now? Uh, I make shit YouTube content. <laughs> <laughs> <Not> <laughs> It's not <laughs> shit. All right, well, sorry for waffling. You didn't waffle. I just feel like when I, when I do these talks, there's, there's no there's no structure in my head. So you'll ask me a question and I'll start answering it and then I'll just get sidetracked with something else and then I'll, I'll never come back to the... But people like it. I hope so. It's like rule one in media training. It's like if you don't want to answer the question that they ask you, just... I'm literally a politician. Make up your own question. Yeah. Perfect. Well, thank you guys for watching. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed that. Ashley is the easiest accessible person to have these chats with. So if there's anything you want me to chat with Ash about, then please do let me know because we can do these every day. All right. Well, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you in the next one. Keep smashing it. And remember, anything is possible. And just... Bye! Bye!